Because we're here in Toronto, we're going to shine a light on both the city and Canada as a whole. And who better to lead us through this than Swift's board member of Canada, Jason Storsley. Jason, welcome to Cybos TV. Thanks and Jason, to be here. you have more than 25 years of global experience in the financial services industry, having worked in financial crimes, risk business transformation, business and retail payments, operations, and investment managing. Your official title, Senior Vice President, Everyday Banking and Client Acquisition at Royal Bank of Canada. I know why Toronto is such a great place because I'm a local Torontonian, yes, but please. tell the folks here at Cyboss uh, why Toronto has been such a great place to host Cyboss this yeah. year. You know, I, I think Toronto is a great venue to host Cyboss. This is actually our third time doing Cyboss. We've done it twice in the past. Um, Toronto is just a, an internationally recognized uh, city. Um, it's home to over six and a half million people when you look at the broader GTA. Uh, it's the largest or second largest financial district next to New York, so second only to New York. Um, it's also got a very vibrant uh, fintech and startup community, I think, which brings in a real culture of innovation and creativity and just changes the way we collaborate between uh, financial institutions and between uh, fintechs as well. So I think there's a lot of uh, great reasons for that. Also, it's a very multicultural, rich in diversity, which not only makes it a great place to live, but also a great place to host these kinds of events and conferences like Cyboss. So just really looking forward to what the week has ahead. Johnny's been getting a taste of some of that diversity. I it? have indeed. <laughs> it's, been it's, it's fantastic. I live in London, but it's, yeah. it's, it's it really takes it up a notch, I think, here in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, Jason, third time around uh, for the city and Cyboss, you must have seen a lot of change in that time. Let's mm. talk about the trends we're seeing in the industry at the moment. Yeah, you know, I think that the industry is really undergoing significant transformational change. And I think there's some key kind of forces of change behind all of that. The first is we're seeing huge investments in infrastructure and payments modernization. Uh, we're seeing uh, regional governments and national governments really step up in investing in their payments infrastructure, ensuring that the domestic infrastructure supports a much more uh, seamless, a straight through, and end to end frictionless kind of client experience. Um, with that is going to be the advancement of uh, you know, various policy agendas, uh, various uh, client experience will improve, efficiencies overall will improve, but it introduces some real challenges for us in the industry I think as well. When you look at interoperability between these payment market infrastructure that our regional and national governments are investing in, how do these speak to each other and how do they kind of coexist to facilitate those end-to-end -end international payments which are becoming you know, so important and so important for our clients and the client experience that we are trying to provide. So that's a, a huge uh, industry trend we're seeing. We're also seeing, I, I would ca call it a, a real step change in client uh, experience and client expectations. They are shifting very much away from cash and into digital and digital payments. You look at the pervasiveness now of wallets, of QR codes, of e-transfers. Clients are expecting that to be embedded in their broader experiences, their shopping experiences, their broader transaction experiences. That introduces certainly new challenges for the industry and as you look at how to embed those client experiences which is part of their expectations into the, into the overall payment flows. Um, I'd also think about you know the regulatory environment. They're really reaching and leaning in to end-to-end -end payments to keep them secure, to keep them safe for our clients and that's really going to put our risk management frameworks, um, some of our compliance frameworks to the test as we think about interoperability with the various kind of global regulatory frameworks that we need to compete with and then add to all of that things like AI and CBDCs, um, you know, the, the outcomes of all of that is unclear, but what is clear is lots of innovation happening in this space, lots of opportunities to really improve that, the, uh, the overall client experience. Let's talk about the Canadian modernization mm -hmm. agenda. A and can you talk about the role that financial services sector can play in that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that payments modernization is very, very important to us. I mean, payments is at the core of everything we do for our clients and provide for our clients that money movement and that end-to-end -end frictionless type experience is absolute core. Um, and so we're seeing huge investments and, and a real interest in that payments modernization agenda. Um, but it takes time. This is a multi-year journey. Um, there are significant investments that, uh, that need to be made overall in payments modernization, starting with our domestic uh, uh, infrastructure before we can look globally at interoperability. So all of those things are underway, but this is a real opportunity, I think, for, um, uh, for financial services institutions to really stand out versus the competition, create those experiences that clients are really looking for. Mm. Let's take a look at Canada as a, as a leader in the financial mm. industry at the moment. How do you see Canada at the moment working with the global community to drive this instant frictionless yeah. agenda? Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, 
Canada has traditionally been a leader in this space. We've been, we've had, uh, you know, e-transfers uh, between uh, P2P uh, um, money exchange for 20 years now through our partnership with with, uh, with Interac. So we have been a real leader in this space, but we have seen at the same time, uh, you know, significant step up in global governments and modernizing their infrastructures. And so Canada, you know, very much is, uh, is keeping pace uh, with that. Um, we are learning uh, from some who may be more advanced and mature in their journeys, uh, bringing in some of those best practices to make sure we build this with those outcomes in mind, really of kind of frictionless, straight through, end-to-end -end, uh, type payments. And so Canada continues to learn from others in this space. Uh, we are absolutely um, adopting to the highest standards as well, ISO uh, 20022, and the way that uh, data is exchanged with, uh, with payment information is absolutely critical to being create those, uh, those frictionless experiences. And so we are on a journey, we are learning from others, but I think we're, we're very much moving in lockstep with the global community. All right, before we let you go, we are here on day one of Cyboss yeah. 2023. So much ahead uh, during this week. What are you most looking forward to? You know what, there's so much that this conference has to offer. There's over 250 different conference uh, sessions. There will be topics covered from payments to securities to risk to innovation. So I think all those are very, very exciting um, to, uh, to be able to connect and, and plug into over the course of the next week. Um, there's some really, really good um, leadership sessions as well. We'll have Tracy Black, who's a CEO of uh, Payments Canada, who will be speaking there about the Canadian's uh, transformational journey with respect to uh, network payments. We'll have uh, Victor Dodick, who's the uh, CEO of CIBC. Uh, and we'll also have uh, Dave Mackay, who is my CEO or CEO of RBC. So always really great to hear what's on the, uh, on the minds of these industry leaders. We've also got some great big idea sessions. We'll be hearing more about AI. We'll be hearing more about CDC uh, or CBDC, um, digital payments as well. So all of these are great topics to uh, be able to, uh, to plug into and connect and learn over the next week. An exciting week ahead. Jason mm. Storsley is the Senior Vice President of Everyday Banking and Client Acquisition at Royal Bank of Canada. Thanks so much for chatting with us. My pleasure. Thanks very much for having me.